it was my third novel. My first two novels had been fairly conventional, both in form and subject matter. And I, I think I felt at that point that I was ready to go for something more unexpected, less conventional, that I was going to try and play with form as well as subject matter um, as jocundly as I could. I must say that when I was in the middle of writing it and I started describing it to my agent, I noticed that her face was very slowly and gracefully falling as I was outlining <laughs> this tale of a doctor who was obsessed with Gustave Flaubert. And, and I must say, when it was published, I had, I had little expectation that it would do more than my first two novels, which had sold about 1,500 copies each, which is why, looking back on it now, it's, it's probably the novel that gives me the greatest pleasure because it had, uh, to me, uh, unexpected success and has then flown you know, to other countries well, as the well. Well, obvious, the obvious question is to ask you why you think that that was... I think that it was perhaps the unusual form that initially attracted people. And then, instead of being put off by it, they found that this was an interesting way of treating the subject. And I think it's a word-of-mouth book as well. Uh, I think it's one that people recommend to one another. And that's meant to be the tip-off to you, that everything he tells you about Flaubert is true or is as true as he can make it. I mean, I made those rules quite distinctly and clearly for myself that that if you were having a, a book in which there was a lot of factual detail and a fictional, this fictional infrastructure that mystification is too easy for a novelist you know, confusing the reader is too easy there have got to be sort of rules which you hope the reader will pick up on so when Geoffrey Braithwaite tells you that Flaubert did X in 1845 or took this train from from A to B then you, you, you're allowed to rely Distinction. I mean, there is, <clears throat> there is obviously a sort of playful, ludic side to the novel, which obviously is a pleasure for the writer. I mean, teasing is a very intimate thing to do, and, and as you never meet your readers except in circumstances like this, but when you're writing, the reader is not in front of you, then teasing is a sort of sign of intimacy, and it's a sign of confidence with the reader, and you hope that the reader doesn't mind being teased or led up the garden path. Yeah. But you are meant to be able to trust... Um, the stuff that you're being... The book began for me very much as it began for Braithwaite. Um, I had always uh, had a passion for Flaubert's work and, and studied it and, and had thought at some point of writing about it and went to Rouen and saw in swift succession these two parrots. The first parrot I saw, I was very touched by and thought, gosh, this is extraordinary. This parrot, strange object as it was, was sitting on his desk... <laughs> in the 1870s, and he looked at it for weeks and weeks and weeks while he was writing this masterpiece, Uncle Sapler's, his, his long short story about Felicite and the Parrot. And that, this thing has sort of somehow come down, and very little else of Flaubert has survived. But mm. I can look at this parrot, and I can think that he looked at this parrot too. And it was partly the sort of the grotesqueness of the object that sort of got through my emotional defences. I think it, if it had just been, you know, uh, um, a, an, an a bust equal. of an equal or a bust mm. of the right of uh, the right um, moulding of the writer's hand or the conventional things by which writers and artists are remembered, I would have thought, oh yes, yes, there's the lock of his hair. Yes, yes, that's his handwriting. Yes, yes, go on to the next town. Um, but because it was a parrot, it just sort of got through to me. And then a few days later, going to the second museum and being shown a second parrot and being assured equally that this was the authentic parrot that had been on his desk. It was as if, as I say in the book, Flaubert himself were personally mocking me, that he was saying, huh, you know, three days ago, you thought you could get in touch with me like that. You thought that this, sentimentally, you thought that this grotesque stuffed parrot could give you a key to getting in touch with me. Writers aren't like that. Keep away. I've sent you another parrot just to laugh at you. The other thing about having a fictional narrator who's dealing with factual material like this is that you can be much more unfair. The reason it, this book isn't written in my own persona, uh, there are about six reasons, but one of them is you can be more unfair, you can be more extreme. You don't have to say, well, on the one hand and on the other hand. You can be more partial and therefore more aggressive, defensive of flow.